Uh, yeah. We're getting calls about a wild party over here. Know anything about it? I didn't think so. Which one of you jokers goes by the name Mario? It's to me. Could you step outside, please? Welcome to Mario Party, where you and three friends battle it out all night long. With six adventure boards and 50 mini games, this party's just getting going. Mario Party, only on Nintendo 64. But it's to me, Mario. Yeah, tell it to the judge. Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. It is your boy Aries here back in the building with the very first video of 2023. I know, Mr. Late to the Party, as always, is just something that's been a common occurrence in my life. I never make plans because of this reason. Why it happens, I have no idea. But over the years, I've learned to be more like water and just flow with the river and just, uh, you know, take it as it comes. So uh, with all that being said, here we are with the first video and we're finally going to talk about the N64 real quick. For a lot of people, the Nintendo 64 is a huge, huge deal, right? I mean, so many people grew up with it. A lot of 90 kids, specifically those born in 90 or 89, uh, were there or were about seven six years old when this console came out so what can i say about the n64 man it's just like a huge huge deal to me because of the console the games and the circumstance in my life at the time you know all that mixed together makes it like big like bomb of like memories that i can really go back to and when i think of gaming when I think of like the most fondest memories of gaming, only two consoles come to mind and that's the PS2 and the N64. But those are like two different periods in my life. So the N64 is when I was much younger and the PS2 is when I'm a teenager. But for the N64, man, when it came to that, it was me, my sisters, my cousins. Like it was just all wrapped around this thing, right? And the fact that it had four player compatibility and a bunch of games a bunch of great games that had the option to play with four players just made it that much more incredible because obviously when it's two players you got to pass the controller back and forth it's fun but you know it's it's not a party we want a party so that's why we play games like GoldenEye we played Smash Brothers the Mario Party games you know for example and it just, you know, it just made for some amazing, amazing times. And also, like, it brought a bunch of other memories as well. You know, going to Hollywood Video, renting a bunch of great games, and then meeting some cool homies at school that we would trade. Like, one homie in particular named Michael in seventh grade, we would be trading uh, games, you know, from time to time. We were very careful because, again, we were in the hood, right? If, if somebody seen you were bringing games they'll break your fucking locker and they'll take that shit so we were very very careful i think one time somebody did break into his locker and um actually took one of my games so he let me keep his and um actually i have one of those games here so we'll talk about that in a little bit but yeah man we did that for the longest time you know that's where i actually got a chance to play a lot of more games you know and i think it was uh, the same thing for him so that's that's pretty freaking awesome right but like i said it's one of my favorite consoles just one of the problems that i always just had with it was just the way the control was obviously we got used to it and we became freaking professionals right but now that i'm older and i try to use that trident controller it just doesn't sit well it doesn't feel right in my hands i don't know why so i use this other green retro bit one i think it's called retro bit um and and that one's okay i got it for like 20 bucks and it feels fine i would like uh the retro brawler n64 controller actually i think that's what i'm planning on getting but um yeah man so i had to substitute it just because like i said the trident controller just doesn't feel well and so you know that's always been a thing with me since i was a kid and i didn't like the controllers but like i said we got used to it we became professionals at it we thought we were the shit <laughs> you know what i mean so anyway without wasting any more time on this blibbering blabbering crap let's get into the n64 collection i've been through the desert on a horse with no name okay so let's start with the first game and this one here was based or is based or was because it's not real it's a big deal now but back in the late 90s early 2000s this cartoon was a phenomenon it was everywhere backpacks 
freaking video games, shows, the, the, everything, man. It was just all over the place. You couldn't escape it, right? And you already know what I'm talking about, right? And that is a Pokemon. And what I have here is Pokemon Snap. Pokemon Snap is okay, right? I mean, all you really do is just snap pictures of Pokemon. That's pretty much it. I remember going to Hollywood Video one weekend, and Hollywood Video was better than Blockbuster, in my they opinion, because at Blockbuster, they let you only rent really movies and games for like three case. days. You know, when you went to Hollywood Video, you always had a five-day rental. So it didn't really matter, which was cool for me, because I was like, okay, cool, I can rent a game. I have five days. If I rent it, on a Friday, I have Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday, and I still have time after school the next couple of days to play the game if I got my homework done fast enough. So that was always my favorite place to go, and that's just somewhere we always win. I don't think my mom liked Blockbuster as well. But anyway, Pokemon Snap was the first, uh, one of the first games that I rented for the N64 at a Hollywood video. And I think it was for, for, for a three day weekend. So I was super hyped, right? I seen the, um, I, I think there was a commercial for it. I can't quite remember where I saw it. It was either a commercial, I seen it in a magazine somewhere, but it looked cool. It looked like just like a rail shooter. At first, that's what I thought it was going to be, like a rail shooter. But obviously, Nintendo's not going to have you shooting Pokemon. Like, come on now, right? So they had to do it family-friendly, and they had to put a little camera in the mix. So I remember taking it home and going through it. And I thought it was okay. I thought it was cool, you know, just take pictures of just Pokemon. I mean, there's no other way to describe it. And it's just, you know, it's pretty straightforward. Obviously, when you advance through the game, you do get advancements, right? You get to go faster in your car. You get a pester ball. You can start using apples. So you can feed the Pokemon. You get a little flute so you can get them to dance, get them to come out of the bushes and stuff like that. So you could technically spend a lot, a lot, a lot of time here trying to figure out all the secrets. But a kid like me with ADHD can only take so much snapping. <laughs> you know what I mean? Before I snap. But it's not a bad game. I just had these certain expectations when I rented it. And, uh, you know, just to say that I was a little let down is kind of an understatement. I was really disappointed at the time. So it wasn't until later, I think my cousins bought it and then I played it some more. And I was like, okay, you know, it's, it's an okay game. You know, it really does take you about three days to beat it. And I think I did beat it um that three-day weekend so there was no really reason for me to rent it again or even buy it because it just wasn't that fun in my opinion pokemon stadium was the far better pokemon game on the n64 in my opinion pokemon stadium 2 as well you know so um anyway pokemon snap if you haven't played it i'd give it a try you know it's something different you know it's, it's like i said it's a rail shooter you're just gonna be taking pictures and if you like that kind of thing give it a try next is a mac daddy of the N64, okay? You can't think of the Nintendo 64 without this game. And plus, they just recently released it on the Xbox and the Nintendo Switch, and that is a golden eye, baby. I mean, we're not gonna spend so much time on this. I mean, what can we say, man? Like this thing right here, every single person that I ever talked to has played golden eye one way or another. It was either they owned it or they went to a friend's house, a cousin's, so on and so forth, man. Like so many people had a copy of this game and everybody just had the same experiences, right? Slaps only, golden guns only, just shooting rockets at each other. Like so much fun was had. I can't begin to tell you the amount of sleepovers, uh, after school freaking like uh, shooting sessions that we would have, you know what I mean, with this. And so GoldenEye just holds a special, special place in my heart. And I know I'm not the only one, many people out there. And also the music is just fire, right? I mean, my favorite is the pause music. And the silo. <laughs> Even the facility's a little banger, right? It's like, dun, 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 dun. I mean, who the fuck was cooking? Man, who's on the keyboards sitting there just jamming? They had their fucking headphones on. They're like, huh, what could I do for this game? And they're just sitting there fucking jamming, bro. And I, I bet you the dudes that were just sitting there next to him, you know, trying to rack their brains and what to tunes or tones to use, this guy just sitting there like a fucking genius, making some of the best video game music of all time. 
All right. But what can I say, man? GoldenEye, a fucking classic, and I can't wait to play it on the Switch. So next, what we have here is a sequel to what we just talked about, and that is 007 The World Is Not Enough. And as you can tell, it is by EA Games this time. But don't let that throw you off, okay? But just so you know, if you're expecting a rare style game, <laughs> this game is not gonna have it. This is a, a unique, well, not exactly unique, but it's far different than GoldenEye. I'll tell you that right now. It has some of the buttons that you're familiar with, but there's a lot more that you're gonna have to familiarize with more, right? And, you know, I was playing with it um, a couple of days ago, and I spent about half an hour on it, and I was really enjoying it. You know, like I said, the buttons do take some time to control or to get used to, rather. And, you know, once you get used to it, it's just simple as that. You know, it just it, the only thing about this game is when it comes to Goldeneye, like this one is a lot more difficult in terms of missions. Like in Goldeneye, say, for example, you accidentally shoot a scientist, you lose that portion of the mission, right? So you complete what, like 80% or 70% of the mission, but you get to continue to the next level. Here, if you shoot a fucking scientist, <laughs> the mission is done with, abort mission. You gotta do the whole thing over again. Which sucks sometimes because you know how NPCs are, right? Like, they start running around with their hands open and it's just kind of like they get in the way, you shoot them and you shouldn't be penalized, you know, having to do the whole thing over again. But, you know, it happens sometimes here. You could be careful, but sometimes you get caught up in the moment and you just start blasting, <laughs> you know what I mean? So you might do shit like that. But man, this game right here should not be slept on. Um, I think this was overlooked because of the um, success of GoldenEye, so everybody was expecting the same thing. But this should not be uh, thrown out. It's something that, you know, you should give a try. It is a fair sequel to GoldenEye. I, I, that's what I could say. And it's much better and holds its, it holds itself on its own, you know, for what it is. But great first-person shooter, man. Uh, the world is not enough. Give it a try if you haven't. Next one that I have here is a personal favorite of mine. I would have to say maybe top five or the sequel of it is a top five and 64 game for me. And that is NFL Blitz. Now, I think I've mentioned this before that I'm not much of a sports guy, right? But when it comes to sports games, I've always been more into the arcade style. I never really cared for Madden, for the NFL, NBA 2K games or anything like that. I think because of like the real life rules of it all. You know, I like when video games go out of the way to like, you know, break the rules. That's kind of, you know, the excitement about playing a video game, right? Is that you don't get to do things in real life. I think that's why fucking Grand Theft Auto is so popular, right? And I feel like NFL Blitz kind of showed me that, that in football, you can't, you know, pass interfere. You can't uh, hold, you can't beat the shit out of the quarterback after he's down, you know, stuff like that. But here, it just makes the game that much more challenging when you play somebody who's as skilled as you or better, right? Because you now you got to figure out their moves and stuff like that. So um, this game, just like I said, it was one, I think it's four player compatibility, if I'm not correct. It's either this one or the second one that is. And another game that me and my cousins would just man just spent so much time on obviously we would get in a lot of arguments say some stuff we probably shouldn't have said <laughs> be angry for with each other for about a couple hours then we'll get over it you know what i mean it's just part of growing up you know this game got the worst of us but it also the best of us you know which is cool so um yeah man nfl blitz one of my favorites and i'm glad to have it in my collection all right so next what i have here is another top 10 maybe top five for me just because i absolutely love this game and there's a cool little story behind it. And that is a Star Fox 64, baby. This one right here is lovely. Now, this is gonna be a hot, or what is it? A hot take. I was gonna say hot opinion, what the fuck? A hot take. And that is, I didn't really care for the SNES version of Star Fox. I know it's fucking blasphemous. Throw this fool in the chokey. Uh, you know, all that stupid shit. But I just didn't. I didn't like the feeling of it. it. To me, it ran a little too slow, right? And of course, it's because of the, the Super Nintendo was having a hard time trying to run that fucking thing. But it looks great. The control, it does work. You could play it, it's playable. But I just didn't like the feeling of it. And I just didn't like using the D-pad, you know, to move a jet. And this one right here just did everything, 
everything better, man. You know, the graphics look so much better, obviously. The controls using the joystick, man, just made it feel so buttery smooth. I want to put it on some toast. All right. And then, like, the thing that just really cemented it for me was uh, at the end when you're fighting Andros. And every time you kill, you know, one level of him, he gets more and more ugly more menacing right until he becomes like an eyeball with like a brain or some shit like that i mean for me seeing that as a kid i was like what the fuck this game is crazy man so action-packed and just i mean there's there's not really much to say i feel like a lot of people have played star fox so you know i can't really explain it as well as most people could but i remember the first time i did play this i think it was one of the first times that i traded a game with uh, my homie in seventh grade I, he let me use this one he let me borrow Star Fox 64 and I think I let him borrow Xena Warrior Princess which was in my game it was my cousin's game so you know he got the shed into the stick unfortunately because that game is not that great of a fighter I mean it's playable me and my cousins have played that a lot but you know it's it's pretty ass but I mean look what I came with man Star Fox 64 and so like you know obviously it was like a weekend thing he came back on Monday he's like you have my game I was like yeah I got it bro I knew you would want to trade that shit back so uh, Star Fox man I'm glad to have it here and just something that I love so next game that I have here is another trade that I did with my homie Michael back in seventh grade except this one I got to keep because my game got stolen from his locker he says I think it got stolen from his house but you know I didn't really argue with him because you know it was a pretty good trade I let him borrow Mario Party 2 which I was really bummed about because like I said me and my cousin would play the hell out of these four player games and so when it got stolen I was really really fucking bummed out and I was scared because I was like my mom's gonna kick my ass right and then he said yeah you know what you can just keep that game and I, I was kind of like okay I wasn't gonna fight him against it because I felt like it was an even trade. And this game is, boom, Banjo-Kazooie, baby. Okay, Mario Party 2 for Banjo-Kazooie was a fair trade because Banjo-Kazooie has a lot going for it, just like Mario Party did, except this one's an adventure. The other one is just like, you know, a bunch of mini games and shit like that. So if anything, I feel like I got the be better uh, deal here, right? But I mean, what can we say, man? Banjo-Kazooie is one of the greatest 3D platformers on the console of that era. If anything, it's one of the best uh, 3D platformers in general. Definitely top five of all time and top five when it comes to the N64 library. There's so much here. It's challenging. The characters are charming. They look fucking amazing. The story is funny. There's a lot of like back and forth between what's that fucking thing called? The, the mole bottles and then with Kazooie. You know, it's just so funny. There's a lot of funny stuff here. It's like watching a cartoon or playing a cartoon. And so, you know, it always really, really stuck around with me and I'm just glad that I got to experience this game a lot longer than I would have, you know what I mean? So I guess it was a blessing that uh, my Mario Party 2 game got stolen. And of course, it's by the Mac Daddies at Rare. And one thing that pisses me off is Nintendo did not treat Rare with the respect that it deserved. He didn't take care of them. So therefore, they went to where? They went to where? Microsoft. Like, thanks, Nintendo. You just threw your, your cash cow away. Like, come on, man. Like, like Nintendo has this history of doing dumb shit. You know, like I know it's in like their, I don't know, it's 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 part of their brand to do like random quirky weird shit with their consoles, make little moves and shit like that. But come on, man, that's just another topic for another time. But Banjo Kazooie, such an amazing game, man. I'm glad to have it here, and it is never going away. Next game I have here is Boom Cruising USA. Now this game I didn't have growing up. I had Cruising World. I believe I had Cruising World. It was either me or my cousin. You know, th those kind of details are blurred sometimes. But Cruising USA, man, such an amazing racer. If you've, well, we've all been to an arcade. I'm not going to say if you've never been to, arcade, to an arcade. But, you know, they were the arcade cabinets with the red seats. And I think those were Cruising World games as well. But, you know, to port an arcade game to an N64 cartridge is not an easy task. But they did pretty, pretty well here. And, you know, graphically it shows a little bit, but control wise, it, it's just amazing. The sound of it all, it just sounds good. Just like NFL Blitz, which is also an arcade game got ported onto a cartridge, like looks fairly well 
graphically you'll probably notice a little bit but other than that it's just a fantastic game and they did a fantastic job with this one and i'm saying fantastic a lot i don't know why you know it's one of those words that just comes to mind so uh Man, Cruising USA, give it a try if you haven't. It is the shit. So next on the list here is, boom, Star Wars Rogue Squadron. Ha <laughs> ha. Now this one, just like Cruising USA, is another game that I didn't really play growing up. It wasn't until I got this cart that I gave it a try. And it's a pretty, pretty fun, um, what do you call it? Because you can't call Star Fox a flight simulator. It's not that. But I guess a flight shooter, maybe? Pretty much what you do is you play as a speedster, an X-wing, a Y-wing, or something like that. And you just go and try to foil the Empire's plans, right? That's pretty much the whole thing. It's very mission-based and mission-driven. But the controls handle really well. The, sh the animation is great. There's a lot of voice um, voice effects here, and they come in pretty clear, you know, which is impressive, especially during this time with carts. When it came to discs, you were able to add those type of features to games. And when it came to cards, it was a little, a lot more difficult to get that in here. So it comes to clear. The music is good, and uh, you know, it does. It's it, it's decent. You know, I didn't grow up with many Star Wars games. The only one that I did play was Star Wars Racer, which, in my opinion, is a fucking awesome game. You know, another game that I, me and my family would just spend a bunch of time on. But uh, Star Star Wars Rogue Squadron is a great game. Um, if you haven't, give it a try. You know, plays kind of like Star Fox almost, except Star Fox is better, obviously. So uh, Star Wars Rogue Squadron, give it a try. So next, I have a game here, and I'm gonna be honest with you, I never really cared for the series whatsoever. I know. Some people do. I've heard many people have mixed opinions on this game. Or not this game in particular, but these games. And that is, boom, Rain Man. And this one here is Rain Man 2, The Great Escape. Now, why don't I like the Rain Man games? Well, for one, it just always feels I'm playing the same game. Now, I know the same can be said for Super Mario games, but to be fair to Mario, Nintendo, I think, knows that, so they try their best to try to do things different from the other. Just look at Super Mario 64, look at Super Mario Sunshine, polar opposites of controls and everything. Odyssey, completely different. Odyssey, completely different. Wait, did I say Odyssey Galaxy? I don't know what the fuck I said. Did I say Odyssey twice? What? But you get my point. But the Rayman game just always felt the same to me. And to be quite honest, this isn't really a bad game. It's actually a really good game. The controls, the gameplay, the music, the characters, everything works so well. I just have this, you know, thing for Rayman games. And you know, I, I probably should be more fair and give it more of a try and give it more of a run instead of, you know, like just bashing it just because I didn't really care for the series. You know what I mean? Because I do have Rayman Legends on the switch and it's fun but i kind of get bored of it easily and this one actually kept me more entertained which i wish that rayman legends was actually more like this but um yeah man i, I would i would suggest you guys giving it a try like i said it's fun it's uh it's it's interesting it's colorful you know it's 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 a great 3d platformer for the console that's for sure i just got to play it some more you know it's by ubisoft obviously so uh yeah man give this game a try if you haven't now what i have here is a stack of games that are collectively the same almost almost there's one here that just straight doo-doo and i'll talk i'll get to that right now but you know every kid every boy i should say because i don't think i really seen girls really into wrestling i could be wrong i'm not being misogynistic or any of that shit. but you know growing up a bunch of boys were into wrestling right we fucking did all their little moves we would say their catchphrases you know my mom hated me doing that whole dx bullshit. i thought it was funny she didn't think so you know do the whole stone cold steve austin thing um, opening the fucking can of Coke, drinking it and fucking throwing it and shit. And she didn't like that very much. So, you know, I got my ass kicked a lot of times for being stupid. But <laughs> with that being said, here is the first wrestling game in my collection. And this one, I hate with a passion. This game sucks. And that is, boom, WCW Mayhem. Man, I fucking, I can't begin to tell you what the fuck were they thinking when they, who made this game? electronic arts okay i don't know what they were thinking it has this weird 
isometrical view of the ring and then the characters like walk around like they got like diapers on and they shit their pants i mean it's just absolutely horrendous the controls are even like the biggest crime of anything the graphics the look of it i can deal with but the controls are so cryptic it's like i'm not playing mortal kombat i'm not playing street fighter i'm not playing world heroes i'm playing a fucking wrestling game can i grapple with a no you got to do some like l and down c or some bullshit like that just to grapple and i'm like you know what no you know i can't believe i wasted money on this two dollars with two dollars i could have got i don't know I can't even get gas with $2. Fuck, man. Like, I, I pretty much wasted $2 for nothing. All right. But that was all saved when I bought this motherfucker right here. And this one right here is by far my favorite. One that I grew up with. And I actually did a video one about a year and a half ago. And I'll put it up here. And that is, boom, WCW and WO Revenge, baby. That's what I'm talking about. This one right here is something very special to me. Right next to Banjo-Kazooie, right next to NFL Blitz. I thought it was cool that you were able to customize characters in the game. Like for me, that was a big deal, right? For anybody, it was cool to, 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 uh, to create your own character. That's what I loved about Tony Hawk Underground and Wasteland because you got to do, you know, create a person as an extension of you doing some shit that you know you can do, right? So it's cool that I was able to do that. And like all the time, me and my cousins would spend a lot of time making like these goofy ass fucking characters and making them wrestle. We thought it was hilarious. But WCW NWO Revenge, such a fantastic fucking wrestling game. If you haven't played it, please give it, please try it. Okay, the controls feel good. Not like that other one. These, these controls just feel so much better. Okay, every button does what it's supposed to do. You don't have to do combinations to do some bullshit. Okay, and with all that being said, let's move on to another awesome title, and that is WCW NWO World Tour. Another fantastic game for the console and plays just like Revenge. You know, it's, I think it's, it's by THQ. THQ did amazing wrestling games. I think the other one, there's two more that um that thq did and just they they nailed it a is grappling b is hitting down c is running or up c is running down c is to get out of the ring stuff like that simple you know what you're doing it the buttons just speak for themselves and this one right here is another fantastic game um i think this one's more the earlier thq wrestling games that they released i may be wrong but i think so because it really shows wrestlemania 2000 yeah baby another amazing game by the way i mean thq just did everything right here and i love that they added intros like with these other ones they didn't it was just you walking out to the ring they did their little thing and they did like the stock music or whatever but here they actually put the wrestlers intros and i was just like man dude like <laughs> it just it just fucking like cemented it for me that thq made some of the greatest fucking wrestling games of all time right and i don't have it here with me but one other wrestling game that i suggest aside from these three would be wwf no mercy okay no mercy is another i think it was the last game for the n64 that's why it's so fucking expensive but i'm gonna cop the motherfucker one day i can't wait but man another fucking great uh, uh reason why thq is a goat of wrestling games okay i never really cared for the wrestling games after for the playstation for uh the ps2 for the gamecube or any shit like that because they just didn't feel right to me they all felt like mayhem i don't know why the controls why are the controls so cryptic i just want each control to be dedicated to something right and thq did a fucking amazing job man and I, I can't thank them enough thq if you're listening to this by any chance i love you now i have two more games here and they're semi complete in box they're just missing the manual which is unfortunate but i bought it off this one dude for 20 bucks you know together so i was like hell yeah and that is boom the first one south park baby another first person shooter if you want to call it it is a first person shooter what the fuck it's not like it's not but it's a fucking fun ride man 
the humor is there. It's exactly like the cartoon. You're playing the cartoon pretty much, right? And obviously you get to play as one of the four characters, Kyle, Cartman, Stan, or Kenny. And of course I had to go with Cartman. The premise of the game is just that there's a comet coming to town and so it's gonna wipe out everything, right? But then I guess, you know, the comet getting closer is creating a bunch of crazy turkeys. <laughs> Fucking aliens are coming down to kill us, you know, even though we're gonna be wiped out by the comet anyways I mean, it's just ridiculous and it's just a really really fun ride It does get drawn out a little bit especially with the characters, right? Because this this was uh, the mid 90s Okay, so this humor was new, you know for the most part But in the game it does get kind of drawn out Carmen saying like oh my thorn talk kiss my ass kind of stuff Like it's annoying because he says it often Right, but uh, I don't know if there's an option to take it off. But you know, if you don't mind that kind of thing, then I, then it's definitely a fun ride, and and it's a really good first-person shooter, especially if you're a huge fan of South Park like I was back in the day. Plus, you know, back in the day, I did have a South Park city. Um, one of the tracks I think was from one of the No No Limit guys, or it was by Master P himself, and it was just talking about Kenny dying or something like that. If I could remember, how did it go? We gonna ride tonight, cause I hear my little homie's gonna die tonight. That's what I said. Gonna ride tonight. My little homie gonna die tonight. That's what I said. Gotta... Some shit like that. But man, if if I could, if I could post it, hopefully I can show you guys. But if not, I'll put it on Twitter, man. And here's my Twitter, by the way, just in case I do drop it. But man, I was just a huge fan of the series. And I shouldn't have been watching it. You know, my mom probably wasn't even paying attention. And so like, you know, my cousins were the ones who put me up on game. So thanks to them, man. So last but not least, we have, boom, Gex64. Another 3D platformer that is quite bizarre, if I'm gonna tell you guys right now. I really don't get the point of Gex. I, I, I know that there's a game for, I don't know if it's for the 3DO or the Jaguar, I don't know which one, but that one looks so much better. It's a, it's a 2D, I think, platformer, and this one just goes all 3D. But I really don't know what Gex's character is. I don't know if he was like this all the time or what, but I guess he's TV obsessed. He goes into all these genres of movies and shows, and it's just, I don't know what you really do here. Just do missions. Like, is he trying to be like the ultimate TV gecko? You know, this was before he was trying to get the role for, you know, on Geico. So he was doing his hardest to do all these fucking, hey, that's a pretty good theory. This motherfucker was trying to be the gecko for Geico. So he was putting in work, going to all these auditions and shit to try to do his best, but he's still fucking lost. <laughs> That's a good fucking theory. What the hell? I never thought about that. But anyway, so pretty much like you start off in this like weird purgatory kind of, you know, like stone temple looking thing. And then the first level you get to is like a haunted house. And this haunted house is pretty creepy. I'm not gonna lie. You know, the, the music is, is, it has this like weird sound to it. There's like these red and blue ghosts, chairs flying everywhere, zombies. Like it's it's actually pretty weird. And you know, pinches luces, hijos so puta madre. Anyway, so I only got as far as the second level. And the second level is like cartoon land or some shit like that. A bunch of goofy ass Looney Tune type shit going on. There's a rabbit on like this, this, uh, this wall that he got smashed on. There's a rainbow that you can climb on. I don't fucking know, man. It's just a really weird game. And I don't know many people, I, or I've heard many people talk about this. And I feel like the people who have talked about it were kind of like, yeah, that game's kind of whack. And I I don't blame them, man. It's, it's a weird game. Maybe I should give it more of a chance. But from what I've played for like 20 minutes, I was kind of like, I don't know what the fuck to say. It's, I'm at a loss of words with this shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, I mean, I wouldn't really recommend it. But if you know you're curious about it, I say give it a try because it's actually interesting. Really fucking interesting. So that was my collection of N64 games. And I'm telling you right now, this console will forever live with me. Okay, I'm gonna be an old fucker in a convalescent home with a, a TV. I don't care if it's a CRT, if it's one of those oh, fancy little shed up TVs. I'm gonna put a fucking N64. I'm gonna have a PC with a fucking emulator and I'm gonna play the N64. I don't care how, but I'm gonna play it, okay, when I'm old as shit. So <laughs> I'm definitely looking forward to that for the rest of my life, all right? But <laughs> anyway, that was my collection. And like I said, man, a lot of these games hold sentimental value to me. And, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to put 
more games into my collection. I collect the ones that I had growing up because those that's what I really want to be quite honest with you I'm not much of a collector so I would like to just get games that I grew up with and that's really been my mission since I've been collecting games but I do come across them for a couple of dollars and I'm not gonna you know just let it pass by I'm gonna pick it up and give it a try but um yeah man that's been the main mission just collecting games that I grew up with and you know I do have a small little list that, that I created to kind of come across it because they're a little pricey you know what I mean but the N64 I absolutely love it. So let me know what you guys think at the bottom. What are some of your favorite N64 games? Do you like the N64? I know it has some people who hate it for some reason. And you know, I can kind of understand because you're probably teenagers at the time. You're like, this is a kiddie shit. This is some kiddie games or whatever like that. So you went to the PlayStation. I get it completely, you know, but if you feel that way, let me know at the bottom. Um, I want to hear your guys' memories, your experiences. You know, one game that holds near and dear to you for the N64 or any game for that matter. So, um, man, thank y'all very much. But I can't begin to tell you, man, all the amazing people that have come to chill, subscribe to the channel, chop it up, you know, a lot of great compliments. It's hard for me to take compliments just because, you know, I get a little embarrassed about it for one and two, you know, I have this weird thing about, you know, do I deserve it kind of thing. I don't know. It's just something I've always had since I was a kid, but, um, you know, it's just been super amazing and your guys' love and support doesn't go unnoticed with me. You know, I think about it all the time and it's just like, it's just so cool that there's people out there who, who like my work and my content. And, you know, it's a major boost of confidence. And I'm just glad, uh, you know, that that there's a there's a huge group of you out there who actually, you know, like my stuff. So it, it's super cool to see that. And, you know, to all the new subscribers, man, welcome to the channel. Um, this pretty much what we do is just chill, talk about nostalgia. There's going to be different types of videos going on later on in the year. I'm tr I, I have a bunch of plans for some other stuff that I, I'm hoping to get done, you know, but with work in the way all the time and things changing, there's going to be a lot of different changes this year in my life. So, you know, it, things may differ, but for the most part, it's going to be nostalgia talk, talking about video games. I'm going to try some different games that I never played before and stuff like that. Hopefully one day I can stream as well. So um, with all that being said, man, thank y'all very much once again. I very much appreciate all the love and support. I appreciate y'all and I love y'all, man, from the bottom of my heart. So uh, until next time, fam, I will catch y'all in the next one. All right. Deuce.